This is an update to my video from last October about streaming 1440p HEVC video to YouTube. If you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link in the description below. In the wake of the RTX 4000 and RX 7000 series GPU launches, I'm still on that HEVC train here to bring you the best settings for streaming to YouTube without selling your left kidney for a new AV1 capable GPU. In that last video, I covered why it is important to use 1440p for YouTube streaming. The short version is that you want to get VP9 transcoding, and the best way to do that is to use 1440p video. And in this video, I uh, I show you the quality difference and I'll put a timestamp for that section in the description below. But today I'm going to talk about uh, a little hack that I learned from Reddit for tricking YouTube into giving you a 1440p transcode and I will cover new OBS settings using version 29.1 now that you can stream HEVC using the standard RTMP protocol. In this video in the OBS settings I showed you how to stream HEVC using the HLS protocol which is not terrible but not as straightforward and now with OBS 29.1 we can streamline this process. To set up a 1440p YouTube stream that will always give you VB9 transcoding regardless of what resolution and frame rate you send, you will need to create a custom stream key in YouTube. To do that, go to YouTube. On the left column, click your videos. That will bring you to YouTube Studio. And then at the top right, click create, go live. It will give you three options here. It might load you into one of these other, which is uh, streaming from webcam and scheduling screen, streams. Go to the standard stream tab. This is your live stream control room. And under here, under your stream key settings, you can select stream key. As you can see here, I created an RTMP 1440p 60 key. Uh, you'll have your default stream key in here by default, and you can create new ones and manage stream keys as needed uh, and delete them using manage stream keys. So what you need to do is create a new stream key Give it a name like 1440p trick or something. Okay, Keep RTMP default. Before we had to use HLS, but with the new version of OBS, you don't have to do that. Turn on manual settings. Set this to 1440p. You don't want 4K. I'll explain that later. Uh, and then turn on the 60 FPS option. If you don't, it'll lock to 30. You turn this on, it'll lock to 60. Most of us want 60 FPS. Okay, And then you'll click, click create. I'm not going to do that because I already have one. Okay. So you'll notice that ultra low latency is now blacked out. That's because this is reserved for 1080p streams where uh, YouTube can transcode much quicker. Uh, all we can use is low latency. And this uh, is about two to, or, sorry, about five to seven seconds of chat latency. Ultra low latency is like two seconds is much better. Uh, normal latency is about 25 to 30 seconds. And the reason we don't want to stream in 4K is because 4K only gets normal latency. So it's really not worth it. 1440p gives you that higher quality stream with also decent low latency. So that's all you need to do in, in YouTube. Uh, now we can go to OBS and change those settings there. First, you'll want to copy your stream key. Uh, this is the code for this new stream key that you made, and you'll use that to put into OBS. Then in OBS, you want to go to settings, go to stream, YouTube RTMPS. This is the standard YouTube uh, streaming protocol. Last time I showed you how to scroll all the way down here and find YouTube HLS, which is the special advanced one. But now that uh, now that we're now that OBS 29.1 is out, you can just use RTMPS, the normal one for HEV streaming. You want to go to use stream key and then just paste in the stream key that you copied from YouTube. You click apply. And now all the video that OBS sends will send to that 1440p stream key and YouTube will automatically transcode it to 1440p and give you VP9. Okay. Next, you want to go to video. Uh, this is where you set your canvas resolution. That's the resolution of this sort of template here. And then your output resolution. That's the actual video that gets encoded and sent to YouTube. So if you game at uh, 1440p or 4K, you want your well, you want your base canvas resolution to be the resolution of your gaming monitor. If you game at 4K or 1440p, set it to 4K, 1440p, or 1080p, or whatever it is. For output scaled resolution, you want to send either 1440p or 1080p to YouTube, unless you have kind of really bad internet, but we'll talk about that at the end. So for me, I game at 1440p, uh, I'll stream at 1440p. If you game at 4K, you should also stream at 1440p, because like I said, if you stream at 4K, you get really bad latency. And then if you game at 1080p, you should just stream at 1080p. There's no point in sending uh, 
YouTube higher than 1080p video if you're only starting with 1080p. YouTube will upscale it to 1440p on their end and give you that higher codec. And then you'll keep 60 FPS in general, unless you have really, really, really bad internet, you might want to drop this to 30, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay. The next thing you're going to go is to output. You can use advanced if you have more advanced things going on, you understand what these settings work, but just for a basic overview guide, I'm just going to stick with simple. Okay. So video bitrate, this will change based on your resolution and possibly your internet speed. Audio bitrate, I try to keep it at 128. That's a good level. Uh, video encoder uh, will change based on your graphics card. I'll cover that in a second. Encoder preset, just use whatever OBS sets as the default here. It's P6 for uh, NVIDIA. I believe it's balanced for AMD. I don't know what it is for Intel. And then your audio encoder, leave this at AAC default as well. Okay. So the video encoder, this is the this is the important part. Uh, everyone will have X264. That's encoding H.264 on your CPU. It's okay. It kind of, you know, adds a lot of load to your CPU and it's, it's not ideal, but it works. Uh, and then most people will have a GPU accelerated H.264 encoder. This is an older codec that is almost universally supported now. It's like 20 years old and it's everywhere. Um, and then HEVC is a newer codec. It's I don't know, maybe like 10 years old or something. And a lot of graphics cards have HEVC encoding. And so if you have a, uh, a, a Ryzen CPU that has integrated graphics, you have HEVC encoding. If you have a Radeon graphics card, going back to RX 400 series, you have HEVC encoding. Any NVIDIA GPU going back to the GTX 10, uh, uh, 1000 series, so I have a 1070 Ti in here, you have HEVC encoding. And any Intel Arc graphics card or integrated Intel iGPU, uh, going back to 7th gen core processors, you have HEVC encoding um, on that iGPU. And so uh, that's what I really like about HEVC is that it's accessible to pretty much everyone. I mean, if you have a graphics card or iGPU made in the last like seven years, you have HEVC. And there's no real reason that I see to go out and buy an AV1 graphics card uh, given that most people have HEVC. Okay? Uh, if you don't have HEVC, if your system is really, really old, uh, then you, you might have to use H.264. Uh, I can go over H.264 settings in another video, uh, but let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in that. Of course, if you already have one of those super expensive AV1 cards, uh, then you might as well use it. AV1 is modestly better than HEVC. Uh, I don't personally think it's worth it. Uh, because HEVC and AV1 are both way better than H.264. Uh, and so I think if you have HEVC, it's good enough. Uh, but we can talk about AV1 on, in another video as well. So to figure out your bit rate right here, uh, you'll need to, uh, if you have really good internet, then you can set this to whatever you need it to be for the resolution that you're gaming at. But if your internet isn't so great, then you need to really check your video bit rate because this is how much of your internet OBS is going to be taking up constantly while you're streaming. And so luckily for me, I get over 100 megabit per second upload with my fiber internet connection. But if I was using a slower network like my phone hotspot, for example, I would only get six megabits per second upload. And then I have to be careful what bit rate and resolution uh, I output OBS in. So to test your internet speed, you're going to go to Google and search speed test. Okay, you can either use the one that pops up in Google or this first one, speedtest.net, a lot of people use. And just run speed test and first it's going to test your download speed uh, I have fiber internet so this is really fast I'm sorry if uh, <laughs> some people are upset by how fast my internet is um, but as you can see I don't really have to worry about my uh, download or upload speeds uh, but if you were to have smaller numbers than this like let's say you know 20 and uh, 6 uh, so 20 megabits per second download and six megabit per second upload. That's like a fairly standard, like, you know, sort of low to middle end cable internet in New York city or something. Um, then you would have to worry about how much internet speed that you have available to you. If your internet upload speed is over 15 megabit per second, then you're not really bitrate limited. Uh, and you can base your bitrate on the resolution of your game. Uh, if your internet upload speed is less than 10 megabits per second, then uh, you really want to set your bitrate to 
like 75% of your upload speed. This is because you still need bandwidth for your games and background apps, and sometimes the speed will fluctuate a bit, and you don't want those fluctuations to cause drop frames in your stream. Here's a table of bit rates and resolutions after you calculate your bit rate based on 75% of your upload speed. Come here and determine the best resolution and frame rate to use for HEVC streaming. These are rough estimates I made using Halo Infinite, which is a relatively detailed first person shooter. Games with a lot of foliage like Witcher 3 or games with high motion uh, like racing games may require more bitrate. And on the other hand, uh, simpler games like Valorant with very flat details or card games like Hearthstone with very little motion may not need as much bitrate. But I think these numbers are a good starting point to do your own testing if you feel so inclined. Uh, NVIDIA also has a guide that I'll link in the description below of upload speeds, recommended bit rates, uh, and then H.264, HEVC, and AV1 resolutions at those bit rates. Their numbers are a little different than mine, uh, just varies based on what game you use to test these things. And so uh, these are all just sort of rough estimates. If you really want to nail this down, figure out what game you want to play and do a little bit of testing your, on your own. Let's use my hotspot network as an example. I game at 1440p and my network has six megabits per second upload speed. So my bit rate should be 75% of that 6,000, which is 4,500 kilobits per second. That's gonna be my OBS bitrate, leaving a little bit of wiggle room for fluctuations and other apps in the background. And if I look at the table, uh, 4,500 kilobits per second is good for 1080p 60fps HEVC streaming. Even though I game at 1440p, my network doesn't have the capability for me to stream at 1440p. And that's fine, uh, 1080p HEVC will still look great. I'll leave a few more examples in the description below for your reference. I'll also add links uh, to test streams uh, using the settings from those examples with and without the, the stream key hack. So uh, I'll, I'll post a video of a test stream streaming to the default stream key where it doesn't change the resolution to 1440p. And then I'll uh, put test streams where it is using that stream key hack. So that way you can see the difference of, of how much it's really going to affect. Uh, it really matters more for the lower resolutions. Remember, with the 1440p stream key hack, with any of these settings, your stream will get to YouTube and automatically get transcoded to 1440p VP9. The better quality you can send, the better the final product will be. But at least if you send a lower resolution like 1080p to YouTube, you won't get an even worse final product after YouTube transcodes it. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps some of you YouTube streamers out there. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or would like me to make any follow-up videos on this topic or another OBS-related topic. Bye for now.